This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Like Frankie Valley said, grease is the word, grease is the time, is the place, is the motion. Hey everybody and welcome to the 1044, a weekly webisode from the editors here at CCJ. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side is Matt Cole. Take a look around any truck shop and a considerable amount of shelf and floor space is dedicated to lubricant. Maybe it's axle grease or the tan grease or the red grease. In any case, there's a lot of it and there's probably many kinds of it. But Tom Garkey, National Fleet Account Manager for Chevron Lubricants, said not to get too caught up on the color because in many cases, it doesn't really matter. So the color of the grease is not uh, indicative of the performance. Um, you can have greases that are, for example, red in color and the color, uh, while the same, is uh, not indicative of the performance. You have grease that uh, has a, you know, different base oils, different thicknesses, and still red in color. One of the greases that um, is sometimes used, you'll find that it's black in color. And when you see that, that usually is an indication that you're using a molly grease or a grease that has um, a solid lubricant in it. Uh, in addition to the oil-based lubricant, and those greases uh, usually range in about 3 to 5 percent of um, molly in, in those greases. If you're looking at a grease either contains molly or it does not, uh, uh, black greases or greases that are black in color are usually the ones that contain molly. If you're looking at a red grease, a blue grease, basically any of your general purpose chassis greases, you're going to find that those will not contain molly. The presence of molly, you'll be able to see it in the grease. Greases and oils perform similar tasks. They both reduce friction, which thereby reduces heat buildup and wear and tear, but they do this job in different ways. And that's why some applications call for oil while others call for grease. Grease is just basically a, um, a product that has a combination of base oil and thickener. And the thickener's job is really to hold that base oil in suspension and, and a, release a little bit of, of the oil over time. Um, and that's utilized instead of, you know, like a, a place where you'd have engine oil, you would have a sump. And since you wouldn't have a sump in a uh, place where you're utilizing grease, the thickener is really doing that job of the sump holding that grease in suspension. I'm sure we've all seen our share of fifth wheels that have so much grease on them that they look like a birthday cake, but, but not every grease point gets the same kind of attention, even though Tom says they should. So one of the key places to worry about is usually Zerks under the truck. Um, what I've heard from customers is that uh, technicians sometimes when they're crawling under the truck may miss a Zerk, and, and especially when a lot of fleets had a lot more manual transmissions, uh, they would miss uh, greasing the throwout bearings on the transmission or when you're looking at a lot of fleets doing extended drain intervals in an A and B service, the, the critical component is making sure you hit every single Zerk because missing a Zerk on an extended service only means that that Zerk is even gonna go out probably twice as far as what you intended it to. So making sure that you grease all points um, is absolutely essential. Preventive maintenance on a semi is pretty cyclical, either on a mileage or a time basis. And greasing intervals, Tom says, are no different, and it all starts with the OEM recommendation. Certainly, I would suggest first to always follow your OE recommended intervals. Um, customers usually tell me what they're looking for, some of the key components uh, that would indicate some level of, of wear as what their, their PM in terms of what their greasing intervals are, is to look at their kingpins, U-joints, and to look for any wear on, on those components. Um, we do have a product, uh, Delo Grease ESI, that we've tested out to 30,000 miles. And I've actually had customers share with me that they have gone beyond that. And when we're talking about greasing intervals, that, that's really for general purpose chassis greases. But then you have other grease components such as trailer hubs that may have a uh, completely different grease interval that may be around 100,000 miles. Greasing is a manual process, but there are automated solutions, namely auto lubrication systems, which can take some of the worry and guesswork out of making sure that you're hitting all your Zerk fittings. But before Tom tells us about the costs and the benefits from these auto lubers, let's hear from 1044 sponsor Chevron Lubricants. Did you know that 90% of the ash and soot trapped inside your DPF right now is caused by your engine oil? It's not like you can go without engine oil, so there's nothing you can do about it, right? Wrong. 
Chevron spent a decade developing a no-compromise formulation when it comes to minimizing ash output and maximizing engine protection. Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology is an ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging by cutting sulfate ash by 60% and extending DPF service life by two and a half times. Delo 600 ADF also enables extended drain intervals thanks to an advanced antioxidant technology that prevents oil breakdown even at the high temperatures found in modern diesel engines. And by slashing the number of regens, Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology comes with a 3% fuel efficiency increase throughout the DPF's lifetime. If you're keeping score at home, that's decreased downtime, extended maintenance intervals, and improved fuel economy. That's real money in your pocket and time saved. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, but now you don't. Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology. It's time to kick some ash. You know, the key is just to ensure that, you know, the Zerks are greased. And, and um, one of the things that some fleets utilize is auto lubers uh, to kind of aid with that. And that's really just an onboard grease pump that um, you utilize. And it has lines that goes out to every single Zerk. Um, and that, uh, that grease pump really is the type of grease you would use in that case is, um, is one that does not contain tackifier because the grease that you're using in a lot of cases there is dictated by the pump uh, more so than the, the end grease point in terms of the thickness of the grease that you can use and that the fact is that you want to use a grease that does not contain tachyfier. Certainly, if you're going to have an extended grease interval, at least you know that you should be getting grease to every point, and those, those auto lubers give uh, an amount of grease released uh, over time. It may, because of the limitations of the pump, it may make you select a grease that uh, you would not have normally selected due to the, the limitations of the pump, or you know that you uh, can't have your technicians ignore each grease point uh, because the auto luber has a job to do, but you still need to inspect that all those lines are um, correctly attached and that grease is actually flowing to all the grease points during your PM. There's plenty of grease points on a rig and there's nearly as many greases for each one. But Tom says there are opportunities to consolidate in many cases, as long as you recognize the specific needs of each component. Yeah, there certainly is an opportunity to get down to uh, a fewer number of greases, but there's a couple of components that you things that you really need to take into consideration. Trailer hubs you have a unique grease uh, that is utilized for them that um, you would probably need to carry if you have trailer hubs that are, are lubricated with grease. Um, in addition, you have um, greases that uh, contain molly, and molly uh, is a, a grease, as we mentioned before, that has uh, a solid lubricant in it, which may be excellent for a fifth wheel application, but uh, you do not want to use molly in a slack adjuster because a slack adjuster uh, with the worm gears in there, the solid lubricant can cause those worm gears to stick and could cause your slack adjuster to fail which could impact in you know, a braking or even on a, a DOT uh, inspection. And so you want to make sure that if you are using multiple greases, one of the concerns is compatibility with the greases, but also you know, the grease utilizing them in the right application. On the compatibility issue, um, you want to look at the thickener of the grease. So uh, differences between like a molly or uh, a uh, lithium complex grease or a, uh, a grease that's made with some other thickener you don't want to have uh, any compatibility issues between those thickeners. Tom's mentioned Molly several times, but outside of a handful of blockbuster movies from the 1980s, Molly might not mean too much to the rest of us. But as Tom's pointed out, it's good in some applications, but it can be detrimental in others. Well, Molly grease is a solid lubricant, um, and perhaps to use a, an example, anybody who's ever built a Pinewood Derby car before knows that you put graphite on your axles to make your car go faster. And basically graphite is, is a solid lubricant, much like Molly is. And that lubrication is there to help uh, with additional protection, you know, so should you get beyond the point where um, you, uh, your oil lubricant, you know, you're at the end of the, uh, the grease interval, and that gives you some additional barrier of protection. The, Places where you don't want it, as I mentioned with slack adjusters before, um, when you have worm gears and you have different types of places where that could cause, the solid lubricant could actually cause sticking. 
um, are some applications where you would not want Molly grease. But when you have some place like a fifth wheel, um, Molly grease does give you a little bit extra, uh, you know, protection. That's it for this week's 1044. You can find more on ccjdigital.com. And as always, you can find the 1044 each week on CCJ's YouTube channel. And if you've got questions, comments, criticisms, or feedback, please hit us up at 1044trucking at gmail.com or give us a call at 404-491-1380. And until next week, everybody stay safe.